Okay, welcome to a Fab Lab tutor tutorial video on how to submit a 3D print order in the Fab Lab. Uh, in front of me here, I have my Rhino file open. In this step of the process, my object has already been converted to model scale and I have isolated it from a larger project file by selecting and exporting it as a .3DM of what I plan to manufacture. Uh, also, after opening that new .3DM, uh, I moved my object from out in Rhino land uh, to the 000 point on the C plane to avoid issues exporting STLs uh, af like, after that. Um, if your models kind of look like a Minecraft style of, uh, uh, in regards to its texture, that's probably what's happening, so always be exporting closer to that C plane origin. Uh, now, I am going to convert my file into millimeters because my previous file was in f uh, feet and inches. So first, I will locate my units preference window by typing units into the command line and pressing enter, which will pop open this window here. Then under units and tolerances, uh, I will set model units to millimeters, which will prompt a question to convert, which I will say yes to. I will then set absolute tolerance to 0 0.001. Under dis distance display, uh, I will set it to decimal. And finally, set display precision to 1.000. I will now check the status of my geometry. Um, I am looking to see if, it's, if all these objects are uh, solid manifold poly surfaces. If not, I will need to make them so. <clears throat> I already know that I want to print this project in pieces, so I will check each component at a time using the what command, which asks you to select an object if you didn't already have one selected when you pull up that command. Um, so the first object here seems to be fine and reading as a solid extrusion. However, if I continue scrolling, I can see that there are multiple geometry objects being recognized here. And if I look at my selected part, there seems to be edges extending into the model itself. <clears throat> so this suggests to me that this object is just two objects grouped together. I will now try to ungroup them using the ungroup command. I can see now that they, these are just two solid 3D objects, and unfortunately this will not work for 3D printing. To resolve this, uh, I will be booleaning them together using the boolean union command. Now they are one closed sol solid poly surface, uh, and I can set it off to the side to export in a second. Now let's check the second object, which is this roof sort of shape. It seems to be reading as an open poly surface, but it looks closed. After orbiting around it, I can tell that one face is missing. I will use the cap command to close this. Note, this is just one way of resolving an open poly surface issue. Um, it will only work for things that are like com uh, perfectly planar, uh, much like this shape. I will now check the third object. It is reading uh, as an open poly surface because it is just a plane with no thickness. I will give this plane thickness by just offsetting the surface by five millimeters and setting it to give a solid output like so. I might have to delete the leftover plane um, and after I get the, the solid uh, version of it. Remember that the thinnest an object can be with our equipment is one millimeter. However, not all objects are recommended to be designed this thin. In most cases, I would not recommend going below three millimeter if possible. Now that uh, all our poly surfaces are closed, I will be recording some bounding box inf information for each part. I will prepare for this by opening a text edit document off to the side, but you can use whatever text software of your choosing. I will now prepare three file names using the required naming conventions I have copied here from the FabLab website, of course. I will use these file names when exporting each of my printed objects. I know that I will be using PLA for all three of my parts, however, this is where you would note otherwise if you were using a different material like TPU. I will only need one of each print, but I decided I want to experiment with the finish, finishes, so I'm going to request multiples of each file in the naming convention. Of course, this is totally up to you. I will now go part by part doing the following steps to prepare our file descriptions for the order form. One, I will run the bounding box command like so. 
two, I will copy the dimensions here and record them on our list for that specific part. Three, I will then export the part as an STL, making sure to copy and paste my pre-made naming convention uh, in the name spot. Using a tolerance of 0 0.00 for all objects is usually fine. I recommend looking up what these tolerances mean when exporting STLs. I caution that sending high density meshes can sometimes lead to printing errors and bog down your upload speed to the form. So be careful if you decide to mess around with that recommended tolerance. Other important details when preparing to 3D print include, each unique 3D object needs to be its own STL to avoid complications. Orders will be canceled and require resubmission if this happens. Same thing goes for not considering the size of your objects versus our machine build area sizes. Please take your time when preparing to 3D print and filling out the form so as not to avoid canceled orders. Okay, now that I have completed exporting and recording the dimensions of each of my parts, uh, in our text edit document here. I am now prepared to uh, submit um, our order to the, uh, through the, the form on the website. Uh, so I've clicked on the fill out form here. I've opened the form and I began filling it out. I will need to put my email here and then I'm gonna list or click, excuse me, select the materials that we're planning on using. And this is only to kind of help the lab prepare uh, for what uh, material that you need for your project, even though you will restate this for each file below. So I'm just gonna click, select PLA. Um, you can do multiple different types of material in one order. Of course, each one of your parts will denote which, PLA, or which material it needs, but this uh, also needs to be filled out. Uh, did you review our submission steps outlined on the website and made sure the unit of measurements are set to millimeters in the submitted files? Yes, we did. Uh, our full name represented on our ID, uh, and then the class number, it could be an architecture or DES class, and then the actual number for it. If you want to add the name after, that's totally fine. Um, and then are you using class funds? Uh, speak with your teachers directly about whether or not you can use class funds for this, and then they need to speak with me about actually setting that up so that we can keep track of the things that you submit properly and then send that over to the proper representative. Um, and then finally, what are the file names and dimensions of each part, which is why we kind of prepared this list ahead of time. Uh, all I'm gonna do is select this now and copy it and paste it into this section and then uh, add your files here. Um, you can also zip uh, or archive those files into one document. However, you still need to make a list. Um, I'm going to go ahead and find our files now. So I gotta browse desktop. 3D files, here we go. I'm selecting all of the ones that I want and opening and then once it uploads, I can submit the file. Oop, it needs my email. cd04 at uic.edu, oops. And submit if it wants to. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, you're welcome to check in, the, check in with the lab after you've submitted it to make sure that everything looks good on our end. Uh, if you don't hear from us, uh, then your file is probably in the queue and waiting to get started. Once it is done, you will receive an invoice and instructions on how to pay, and then you can come pick it up. Uh, we will not be handing out any partial orders, um, so you can only pick up your full order after it's fully complete and you've paid for it. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop by the Fab Lab uh, or you can email us at fablab1330 at gmail.com.